Right, so I'm back out here in the garden in this longer grass area because two nights ago I found something really exciting out here. So I actually came out after dark to look for the comet that's visible at the moment. And on my way out, I discovered that I have glowworms in the garden, which you can imagine produced a huge amount of excitement in the family. This is the spot where we saw one of the glowworms and then we found three others further down there. So I thought what I would do is come out here today in the daylight and just talk about the glowworms and what their requirements are, their habitat requirements. And then this evening after dark, I'll come back out with the camera and see if we can film any of them. So, complete surprise to me that they're here, which was brilliant. Um, now we're on a sort of fairly chalky area. And as I've mentioned before, I've been trying to create wildflower areas within the garden which is obviously something that the glowworms would like. Now glowworms are actually beetles and they have a really fascinating life cycle. So the larvae will live in the garden or on a meadow for up to two years. Now they'll become dormant over winter, but obviously active when it's warmer and they'll be feeding on small snails and slugs. So really useful predator to have in your garden actually. Then what they'll do sort of between May and the end of July, August sort of time, they'll pupate and then they will hatch into the adult. Now this is the really interesting bit. The adult males do fly and look for the females but the females, the adult females, don't have wings and they can't fly so they will find a spot and they will stay in that spot for two weeks and they will glow at night to attract the males. Now this is one of the spots where we found one and they will be in this same spot for the two week period, roughly the two week period. During the day they'll go down into the longer grass and in the evening they'll come up onto a plant stem and the bottom three segments of their body will glow really brightly to attract a male. Now they can't feed, they only have this two week period where they will be living as an adult. They can't feed, so once they've mated, they turn out their lights, they lay their eggs, and then they die. And that's the end of the adult. So very, very short period of time. But then as I say, the larvae can live for up to two years in the garden. So really, really quite fascinating. Now they need some nice long grass areas. They like a nice sort of open habitat. So really shortly mown grass or improved grass for ag agriculture isn't suitable. So also the other things that may be a problem for them would be use of chemicals, for example, in the garden and also lots of artificial lighting. So they're going to need a lovely natural habitat. Traditionally, they'd be associated with chalk downland, but they do occur in hedgerows and obviously in gardens as well. So if you do have them in your garden, it's a good idea not to mow during this period where the adults are glowing and mating and definitely not to mow when it's wet because that thatch of damp, wet, vegetation will trap them and they won't be able to come up in the evening to glow. So it's really important not to use chemicals, to try and leave some lovely wild areas for them um, and come out and enjoy them. So later on I will be coming back outside in the hope that we'll be able to see them glowing tonight. So I'm back out in the garden at around about 11 p.m. and we've got this lovely female glowworm moving around right in front of me here. And it's quite tricky to focus unfortunately in the dark on this but you can just about see this lovely neon light right in front of me. So a couple of nights ago I counted four females but there are only two out here this evening, so it may be that the others have mated and laid their eggs and died. So we've got these two 
left out here at the moment. And you'll see it's the end three segments of the body that glow to try and attract the male. Which is really moving around, actually this one in front of me here. So they do this by a process called bioluminescence. Now they use a molecule called luciferin and that actually oxidizes to form oxyluciferin and with the aid of an enzyme called luciferase you get this amazing bright light produced which is used as I say to try and attract some mates. So I'm just trying to focus in but it's quite tricky as I said. So I will leave this one in peace and hopefully she'll find her mate and then she will eventually turn out her light and lay her eggs and die.